basic flamenco cadence. In this video, I'm going to talk about that. I'll hopefully try to make it as simple as possible, nothing too complicated at all, actually. Uh, just to be clear, though, I want to mention something to be honest in the beginning, that this type of thing, uh, honestly, I did by myself. When I started learning guitar, I, I used to love to fool around with the guitar a little bit and try to experiment and figure things out rather than always playing pieces, right? So I did it by myself without really knowing um, theoretically what I was doing in, in music theory, I mean. But later on, of course, when I started to have to teach to students, I had to explain what I was doing, no, or what was happening. More or less, again, nothing too much. I'm not into it too much. But uh, more or less, I, I started to, to understand what I was doing to explain but in a better way and all that. OK, so I'll try to keep it as simple and clear as possible for this video. Flamenco is based on the cadence, right? As I'm sure you've heard many times before. Now, uh, the word cadence itself is important to know. It's like a, a sequence of falling down, the fall, let's say. So if you take, let's say, E minor chord here, and we start going down the notes of E minor, but putting chords, let's say like this, going to D. So the E minor here is going, the falling down, right? If we put the chords on it, we end up on B or B flat nine, let's say. Now, if we do the same thing, what we did on E minor, but on A minor, we're going to, first of all, we take the scale A minor, starting on A. of A minor. Now to do the cadence we go four notes starting from A. So we have A, G, F and we resolve on E. Okay? Of course to be to make it more interesting if we add the chords, let's say starting on A like this. more complicated what I'm doing here but the bass is right there the A G F okay and then E or flat 9 is having this F note there now uh, what I want to say here is something very important about the chord progression that it doesn't have to be like this always it doesn't have to be A G F E to be cadence so-called right you can start or you can mix up in any way you like the chords as long as you fall onto E is going to be considered let's say as cadence so even if you do let's say if you you start on E you can even start on E which later I will show you in some palos if we do on E like this and go up and G we're always resolving on E then it's cadence it doesn't have to be just doesn't have to be just like that always now something very important if you noticed in the cadence on the last chord something is happening a little bit uh, off let's say if we take the a minor and then we go to G F on the last chord we're putting E like this if you noticed here we have the G sharp in the beginning it I used to a little bit like I think about it a lot like this is not on the key but how is it happening why is it why are we using this right so just for all of you out there who want to let's say an explanation for that a brief one I'm not an expert on that too much but I will try to explain there so to to see where this came from let's say let's look at two different keys a minor from here And the A harmonic minor, which is okay, they use this so much in flamenco, right? We have the harmonic minor, right? So let's pretend when we go to the E here, let's pretend that we went to that harmonic minor for a second until we go back to the normal key on A natural let's say back here so here let's say we can we are playing on a a minor and then we go to g all the notes of g here are still inside a minor all the notes of f are still on a minor except here we have this exception with the g sharp in this
this case, we can just pretend, let's say, that we want we went to the harmonic minor just for a second, and then we can go back to the key after this. So. Back to the key, let's say. Okay? So now what if you're listening to a piece and you want to know where is the cadence of that, like the full cadence of that certain piece, which by the way, I highly recommend always. If you're listening to a piece that the key of that piece is unfamiliar to you, you don't know where is the, what's the key, first thing you need, you need to do is basically look for the cadence on that key because at least in flamenco, it's going to open up so much for you. It's very important. That's how I always do it. Again, an unfamiliar key that you're, you're hearing, let's say, look for the cadence, first thing, okay? Let's say you're hearing only the Phrygian dominant, which in that, if I, if I take A minor, the Phrygian dominant is going to be that chord right there, the Phrygian dominant. Now, what if you're hearing only the Phrygian dominant chord on another key, let's say here, on Bulerias, you hear this a lot, let's say. You're only hearing this and you want to know where's the full cadence, how can I find it? What you need to do there is take the tonic, which is going to be the C sharp here, and go up by four notes, starting from the tonic. Let's say one, two, three, and four. Always the first chord of the cadence here, the, the, the full cadence, let's say, starting from the beginning is minor, major, 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 let's say minor, never, so many people make this mistake, be careful, because here the key, if we take the notes, let's say, not, we're not using this, okay? then basically the, the notes inside of that specific key if we're taking in this case now F sharp minor it's all the notes inside the F sharp minor here even the E and D like we said before the exception is on the last one the region dominant here we are having this one which is like we said the harmo harmonic minor of this to F sharp. Very important, okay? Now let's take some palos for example and see how the cadence is working inside these palos. Like I mentioned before, it's not always like this. Not necessarily always starting from A and closing to, to E, let's say here, flat 9. So if we start, let's take bulerias for example, nothing too much, right? In bulerias we're actually starting with this chord, the Phrygian dominant here, and we're going up like this. Right? If you notice the order of the chords started with E, actually, and then go up, going back down, going back down the cadence, not this is not the tonic here, we're not playing on A that we are always falling. So if you do a falsetta and then you do the remate and you end up here, it's going to sound very weird, right? So I really recommend not to do that. So now let's go to another palo. Uh, I'll choose tangos, for example, and I'm going to stay on the same key so that we can have a clear picture on how, on the same key, how the order of the chords are and how we are always falling on, let's say, the Phrygian dominant. It's better that way, I believe. On tangos, for example, we're starting on F. We're going like this. Right, we're starting F and then going to the Phrygian here, to the E flat 9, and then again F. And now we're going, let's say, the, the basic note. We're going F, we're going G, F, and then falling back to the E. 
As you notice, it's similar to the bulerias. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar, no? In the bulerias, we started on E. Right? And then in the tangos, we're starting more, mostly here on F. Of course, the rhythm is changing and everything as well. But the harmonies is starting here on F and then closing to always the E Phrygian dominant here. Okay? Now in solea, for example, solea we have, we're doing like this. We are doing now F, C major. You see how the, the structure is completely different here on the solea, let's say. And then F again closing on the E region dominant here. Okay? Now let's take fandangos for example. Right? In the fandangos we're starting E. Here's the dominant. It's not we're not really uh, focusing here on the region dominant. It's mostly like a dominant for the A minor. Let's say 7, E7 now. And then F, E. You see that now the structure again is very different. Or. We're doing. We're doing the G, F, E. Okay? This is another example, let's say. Again, another example would be, let's say, Malagenia when we're closing. In the Malagenia, it's also very clear the, the cadence how it's happening there. E, a minor. If you follow the bass, clear cadence, right? Now let's take Granaina for example. It's going to be a little bit more tough to, to play on A minor, but I'm going to put the bar on the fifth fret and do like this. Check this out. So from here. Or. Right? Granaina. It's, it's incorrect. Don't follow this. But just to see the cadence here also. Right? A, G, F, E. Again, if we are taking the same key. Now let's introduce the dominants. The dominants basically are going to make what you're playing 10 times more flamenco, really, in my opinion. If you choose them on the at the right place, and the right position of the dominant, the right harmonies you put, it's going to make it sound really, really much better and more flamenco. Starting A minor, the dominant, now we're going to G. So what's the dominant of G? We're going to take D7. Now C7 is the dominant of F. And then here you can put, let's say, the seventh. This is going to add more tension before closing or resolving. Because if you're playing here, we want to go to E, right? So if we, you are on F, to play around the note, it's like, I don't know, in my mind, I just imagined somehow now, like, a, you know, in, in golf, you have to put the, the ball inside the small pocket. It's like this pocket is the E and the ball is just going around it before going inside. Let's say here, until you fall or res resolve on the E. I don't know why it just came to my mind now. I never play golf, by the way. One. Right? It's very, very important. It makes it more, much more flamenco. Now let's take the middle position of the dominant chords. For example, from here, I like to play por solea, for example, like this. It's very interesting. I tried to put this video like this to show you guys on one key how they sound like all the different palos so that we don't get confused. When we change key, it sounds like, oh, we did something very 
weird or not weird, just different or something. It might seem confusing, but really it's just always a, kind of the same thing in a way, but uh, just a different uh, chord progressions. It's just the order of the chords are different, but always, let's say, resol resolving on E, let's say the Phrygian dominant. Now, just to be clear, it's not all the palos. This is not all flamenco like this, all the resolving here. Of course, we have some palos. Let's say we are playing Farruca. In Farruca, we're playing on the A minor. We're not resolving on E. And in Alegrias, we're taking the major keys, the major chords, I mean. So not all of the keys, uh, not all of the palos, I mean, are going to resolve on the E Phrygian dominant here. Okay, just to be just to be clear on that. But many palos, the ones I mentioned, let's say at least in the videos, in this video, uh, are resolving on this same chord. Okay. Now I would recommend you to feel free and start experimenting by yourself. Let's say uh, on the guitar, how how well basically different positions of the same thing. Like you can take if you want to study only A minor, I would even recommend that exploring on the guitar the different positions of the cadence and then adding the dominant searching for different sound okay i hope that the video helped you as always and um, thank you for watching and before i go i just want to remind you guys that i'm offering skype lessons now if you're interested you can just click on the link hopefully i'll put it right here <laughs> and then you can see all the information for the classes and uh, hope to see you there i hope also to see you next time in the next video cheers